Hi, good evening, and welcome to tdcat.com. Today, this isn't really a tutorial video. It's not even a review or anything like that. It's just me having a play, play around with some wireless settings on OpenWT, uh, OpenWRT. I've fairly recently actually bought a Linksys WRT 1900 AC router. And to be honest, I'm not impressed. The, the default firmware is unbelievably unstable. I mean, we're talking reboots and resets every couple of hours. So I've gone down the route of um, installing OpenWRT and the route has now been up for 19 days continuous with no drops since that installation. So what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at my wireless network and currently I just have the one radio in, uh, enabled, which is this one here, the 2.4 gig radio. I'll get onto the 5 gig radio in a minute. And I want to make a couple of changes to this and you'll see uh, I've got some um, in SSIDA, so I'm just going to call that Insider for now. I don't know how it's pronounced. You'll see that this is currently set at 54 megabits per second, so it's actually just the BG standard. And set to channel 3, so I want to just do some config changes to the wireless. By, uh, by default, the wireless is actually disabled um, on on the uh, on the router when you install w OpenWRT, and that's really simple to change. It's, uh, so if we just go into etc config and wireless, so the, the, these are set, these here, option disabled, set to one, so you just need to set both of those to zero if you want to enable both those radios. Um, so at the moment we have no HT mode in here. Now to enable wireless N, we, we need to put an, an HT mode in there. So I'm going to put um, option HT mode, and I'm going to start with HT20 because there's some like it's really confusing around what does what and and what actually works and what doesn't work and things. So I'm going to try it on this particular router, and hopefully anyone using the same router might find this helpful. So this password here has been marked out, so just won't get into my wireless network on that. The country code is currently set to GB, and I just save that just do a Wi-Fi down. Let's, just, let's just sleep for a couple of seconds and then Wi-Fi up. You don't actually need up on there but let's do it anyway. This is a remote machine running Insider and it's actually connected on LAN so that any changes to the Wi-Fi you can see sort of in real time if you like as in I don't lose remote connectivity when I disable the radios here. So what you'll see now is it's now picked up the fact that it's now an N network here, and the channels are see, it still it still indicates the channels are spanned right across this amount of bandwidth, which seems strange because I would have thought under B and G they wouldn't have been. I don't they were weren't they when I started this they were still spanned across that that amount of so like right across. Oh no, I guess they do, don't they? Of course there are only yeah there are only three channels that overlap. That's right. That don't overlap so yeah that's probably correct and uh, maximum speed currently 216.7 which is a bit sort of a weird amount I don't know why it does this occasionally I think that's actually to do with the radio on the on the laptop more than anything else so let's make another change to that and let's set it to HT40 I'm not going to specify a plus or a minus. I'm on channel three, so hopefully it'll just default to the right, right thing. And just watch these figures here. See whether any. Right, so we're now still on N, but it detects that the maximum potential of it is 450 megabits per second. But on this router, it's advertised differently to that. It's actually advertised at 600. So how? So if we enable, so the only other ones you can go into are uh, VHTs. And I know for a fact from having tried this previously that VHT40 and VHT80 don't work. And VHT20 does. So if we enable VHT20 on here, and then do a Wi-Fi down again, And it now picks this up as a full 600 megabits per second. 
and it also picks it up as an a as AC, which is strange, because I didn't, I thought AC was only on five gig. I didn't think AC was anything to do with two point four gig. I, so I'm not quite sure why this is picking it up as a uh, um, as AC. But either way, the difference in speed, if you run a speed test, and I'm not going to do that now because it'll run it, I want to prefer to do it on this machine, and, uh, and it'll run it on the, um, on the LAN cable, not on the uh, Wi-Fi. If you run a speed test, the actual results for the 450 version and the 600 version are identical. Um, I mean, literally, they're exactly the same. There is no improvement between them. Uh, that's running on a speed test on an iPhone. And the results are good. I mean, I'm getting 35 megabits per second um, downstream, and then upstream is just maxed out because it doesn't do any more than 20 megabits upstream on my connection here. So, yeah, I'm not, I don't really know. I don't know whether anyone could maybe comment or come back to me and say, what's the benefit of this? I mean, is this some way of enable, enabling some beam smart um, beam forming technology or something like that. I don't know. But uh, so anyway, let's go back and enable the five gig radio because this is really nice. So we have our option 11A and our default here is VHT. We're going to set it to VHT 80. And again, country code is GB. Oh, if you want to install Nano, by the way, it's just a simple um, open package management install. So it's just OPKG. Install Nano. That's all you need to do. Right, so we now have our second network that's popped up here. And this is an N and an AC network, exactly as we would expect, with a maximum bit rate of 1.3 gig. Insane. Anyway, the speed results on this network are very good. Um, speed test downloads at about 73, 74 megabits per second, which is almost the max the network can do. It's, um, it's 76, 77 down. And upstream, obviously, again, is maxed out. So this performs really well. So if you do have this type of router, I would su probably suggest the best settings for you, for your two radios, are VHT20 although you can set it to HT40 and it doesn't seem to make much difference. And, um, and VHT80 here to make sure that you're getting the 1.3 gig um, AC setting. So that's the first bit covered and we're at seven, well, we're at nearly eight minutes now. So hopefully if you're interested in this sort of stuff, you might not be getting bored, but... <laughs> What we're going to look at now is transmit power. And you see a lot of configurations out there with this sort of obsession of with transmit power. And the thing with transmit power is it's all very well getting out better on the router end, but your device has to be able to get back to the router. So if you don't improve the positioning of the router or the reception of uh, the router or the interference or noise levels around the router, you don't really benefit too much. So yeah, you see people TX, TX power here of 30. And I'm going to put that in here and just prove a point, actually. So if I put that in there and I do a Wi-Fi down. Yeah. So TX power, the setting, at least on the chipset that's used in the WRT1900AC router, does not get affected by TX power. So don't waste your time kind of playing around with that setting because it's not going to do anything. What you will find, however, if you do have problems with your uh, reception. Nope, sorry. Why did I do that? You will find that what does change your power is the individual regulation settings for each country. So as soon as you set this to US, the router automatically changes and sets the maximum transmit power for that reg um, for uh, for that country or that area. Well, it's country, isn't it? It's country specific. As uh, country specific transmit powers, in that case, US. So FCC regulations, I suppose. And what you'll if you take a look here, we're looking at the green line on this particular page. We're now at a um, 
signal of minus 50 dB, which is really bad considering where the laptop is compared to the uh, compared to the router. It's pretty poor. But and then this one here, because that's the one I'd expect to change. In fact, I'd expect the five gig to go down because the maximum output power in the US on five gig at these frequencies, so the uh, channel 36, 40, 44, and well, I, don't think, I don't think they do 48, is 17 milliwatts. Uh, sorry, 50 milliwatts, um, so 17 dBm. And if we reset that now, so what you see now is a quite noticeable and real lift in the signal level on the 2.4 gig we're now at minus 32 db minus 33 34 so somewhere around there it's it is a true 10 decibel lift on the transmit and that's that's 10 decibels is is some going i mean that's like a massive increase in power that's 10 times the power and that's exactly what it's done it's increased the power output of the router from 100 milliwatts to one watt uh the ERP of the router, so effective radiated power or whatever it is, um, will potentially be more than that actually, because uh, t because if you've got kind of aerials with reasonable gain on them, so three or four dB, you will probably find that that's actually about one and a half watt out. But that's a real, that's a big increase to have. Um, so that could help you if you're having reception problems and uh, signal problems on 2.4 gig. But it is of course illegal to do it in the UK because you're outputting too much power for that uh, 2.4 gig band. So you really need to stick to the GB country code. The choice is yours. So I'm gonna change this back to GB because that serves me fine. And when we do that, yeah, as you, as you can see here at the same time, you can just have a quick look before it goes off the screen. You'll see that there's a, um, a reduction in that one due to the drop from 17 dBm to, uh, sorry, from 20 to 17. So essentially halving of the power from, uh, I think it's 100 milliwatts down to 50 milliwatts. And 50 milliwatts at five gig is not gonna get you very far. So I would, if you are gonna use the five gig network, I would definitely recommend leaving these set to the UK country code, so set to the UK, if you're in the UK, of course, uh, because that sort of 100 milliwatts out at 5 gig is uh, really useful. So, one final one. Yeah, there we go. Look at that drop. It's a bit disappointing in a way, isn't it, when you see it drop like that. Anyway, so in summary, well, what are we talking about? So to get the 1.3 gig and the 600 meg support, on this router, this is the Linksys WRT1900AC, probably applicable to other routers as well with the same chipset. Um, if, uh, same radios particularly, I would set the 2.4 gig radio to VHT, HT mode VHT20. I would set the five gig radios to VHT80. That gives you your full rate. And I would stick, set the country code to whatever your country code is, because it's the only thing I can recommend because it keeps things legal. But, you know, you might want to have a play around with that and see what results you get. So hopefully you've uh, managed to bear with me for the length of this. I'm just, just kind of curious around that um, AC thing on 2.4 gigs. So if someone can get back to me on that, I'd really like to know why that set, why that comes up as AC when, uh, sorry, not on 4042, so on this one here. Why that's set to AC when I thought AC was solely a five gig thing. If you've got any thoughts or any comments or any questions or anything or, you know, you think I've done something wrong here, then oh, I could make it better. So that'd, be even, that'd be good to hear from someone and um, uh, and have have them suggest a way of uh, uh, getting something even more out of these routers. That'd be great. And, uh, yeah, just get back to us and uh, subscribe if you like what we do. I will catch you soon. Bye-bye.